Welcome to Fading Memories, a podcast with advice, wisdom, and hope from caregivers who have lived the experience. Welcome back, listeners. Thank you for joining us again today. Guess what? I'm not going to butcher this guest's name because she happens to be named Jennifer. And Jennifer Hall is from Ergo Motion. They have a bed called the Dawn House Bed. We're going to talk about that and how and why sleep is so important to our brain health. So thanks for joining me, Jennifer. I swear I should have butchered your name just for a joke. (laughs) It's great to be here. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you. So um, I don't think when we talked before, I asked you if you had a connection with dementia. Um, Quite a bit. So I was actually in senior living for 13 years, Uh, worked for a uh, West Coast regional senior living company that focuses on assisted living and specializes in memory care. So I, I learned a lot during that time. I was able to partner with Alzheimer's Association, participated in a lot of their walks um, and in some of their webinars and research. So I, I've learned a lot personally. Um, I've had a number of relatives with different types of dementia, some of them specifically Alzheimer's. Um, my grandmother had uh, TIAs, so many strokes that that uh, sort of contributed to dementia. So have experienced um, the journey, yes. <laughs> Sounds like you've experienced it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, it makes you very aware, <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah, once you have been on this journey, you have a family history, I th- I find that most people are very they're very focused on making sure they don't get this disease so, <laughs> or any of them. Yeah. Um, as my audience knows, my mom had Alzheimer's for twenty years. Her mom had mi- mixed dementias, and my maternal great grandmother had dementia. So, yeah, brain health is a daily daily thing that I work on. <laughs> It's a good thing, and sleep is a very important part of that. So, tell us a little bit about the Dawn House bed, and then we'll talk about how it can aid in better sleep, and then we'll talk a little bit about why sleep is so important. Sure. Well, the Dawn House bed, like as you mentioned, is a product of Ergomotion, and Ergomotion is uh, the largest manufacturer of adjustable bed bases, and the uh, chairman of the company had a personal experience. So he'd been, you know, manufacturing these bases for a long time. But a friend of his who lived alone passed away in her sleep and she was by herself. And Jack realized that there had to be a better way to monitor health, um, become more aware of issues that might be coming up ahead of time. So he tasked um, the Ergomotion team um, with creating a division that's focused on wellness. And that division's first product was the Dawn House bed. The key to that bed, it has a, a lot of features, which will we'll cover safety and security and helping people to be more independent. The key for him was to have um, the bed built with non-contact, so passive sensors built into the base of the bed. And then when someone sleeps in the bed, the sensors can monitor micro vibrations from the person sleeping, and it can distinguish between things like light sleep, deep sleep, REM, so different levels of sleep, how long you've been sleeping. Um, It measures heart rate, heart rate variability, respiratory rate, many different areas of health and sleep. And that d- data is then passed on to the Don House app that the user has downloaded. It syncs with the bed. So they wake up each morning and they can open up their app and they can see all of those different variables of their sleep and health. And it's really more about um, overall trends and, and paying attention to changes rather than that individual night's sleep that might give you some confirmation or not. Um, but one of the great Parts of the reporting is that people as they age, um, as we know um, from many studies, that 90% of people from 50 on up want to stay in their home, but very few are prepared to to do that, whether their home is prepared for them or their health care needs. 
So with the Donhouse app report, the user can choose to, if they want to, share that report with a loved one. So if they want to pass that on to an adult child who lives nearby or maybe lives in another state or shares that with a, a one-time visit with a physician, that way there can be someone getting peace of mind. So maybe there's been a discussion about you wanting to stay at home by yourself, but your loved ones are maybe not on board with that completely. So this is sort of, I, I like to think of it as a negotiating tool um, because it point. does give them peace of mind. They can see, you know, there are changes. It can trigger conversation. Have you changed your medication? Have you changed your diet? Are you having any pain? And if they're seeing changes in their sleep or heart rate or any of those other health metrics, that conversation can, can be initiated. Now, real-time data seems to be the future or maybe it's already here yeah yeah and i know the, the report measures daily weekly monthly even annual so you could really compare changes over time well and it does more than say your apple watch because you can track your sleep and it tracks other stuff but i don't think it tracks it like all at once like here's your sleep pattern respiratory pattern heart rate pattern overnight plus if you got to wear it charge your watch you know it's kind of well and what we found from other studies with one of our other products um, that's focused on people with active lifestyles is a large percentage of people don't like to sleep with their watch or their wearables it's just uncomfortable they can't get used to it so this way it, it gives you that sort of holistic they may and that's something we're working on now is connecting with um, Apple Health and Google Fit and, and different tools so you can get that holistic 360 view. You don't have to wear that I, that wearable to bed. Yeah, that would, that would be my preference. So changes in sleep are pretty common in older adults. And it doesn't necessarily always indicate that there's something wrong. But sleep is important for sorting and storing memories, clearing out the junk from the day in your brain. Yes, yeah. It's, you know, why do you think monitoring sleep is so important? Like, why why would somebody want to invest in, in the Dawn House bed? Just, you know, because, I mean... Well, there are additional features that I should probably cover too. So those sort of safety and security features, the um, the bed is what we call a high-low bed. So it adjusts up and down. So whether someone is short or tall or just has difficulty um, with mobility, that will help ease them getting in and out of bed. If, if there's a caregiver, lifting that bed up might make it easier. They don't have to bend over as far, so it's not as difficult for them. It also can come with an optional support rail that helps the person getting into bed sort of brace themselves, something to hold on to as they sit into the bed. Um, it's it's designed with an inset base so they can walk right up to it with their feet under it, turn around, use that rail to sit into it. It also has under bed lighting, so it can be motion activated. So when you wake up in the middle of the night, which as we do more often <laughs> as we get older, um, it has a very faint light around the base of the bed. So you can sort of see where you're going, which helps diminish. We know falls are one of the um, biggest issues as we age and most dangerous. So it sort of helps slightly light the way. So you might not trip. Um, and other features that we have are we have a voice activated. We call it a puck or a console. So you can actually direct the changes in the bed, articulate the head, the foot. There's relaxation settings. You can do preset settings of your bed. You can, and you can do that with your voice. We have some customers who have um, Parkinson's or MS and they've gotten to the point where it's difficult for them to use their hands. So the voice puck is, is important for that. So there are a lot of different features that, in addition to that, the sensors and the reporting and the data just help make it a safer place for you to get in and out of bed or help caregivers help you get in and out of bed. It makes sense. And the, the soft light underneath that's motion activated would be really nice. My furniture is all black oh, and yeah. we have no, we have no natural, well, we have no light 
in mm-hmm. at night. We have a skylight, so if the f- moon is full, we get a little more light in well, the bathroom area. That's what you want. So that's, that's great. <laughs> yeah, it's it's wonderful for sleeping. It's quiet where we live and super dark. But I've learned basically to slide out of bed because it's a little tall for me. And then I put my hand on the dresser, and then I know it's about three or four steps forward. And then there's the carpet ends where the bathroom begins. And so then then you kind of... You figured out your way. (laughs) Yeah. Well, when we first moved in, we didn't have flooring, and it was really dicey. And it was new because we had lived in a temporary house that had way too much um, light pollution. (laughs) So, yeah, we went from too much light at night to... um, Did I go blind? You know, it was, it's yeah. really, really dark, which is really nice. It's actually almost annoying when we have a full moon because oh, it's almost like that. somebody's left a light on in the closet. You're like, what is that light? But well, it one does... of the key things, too, with that mm-hmm. lighting, in addition, is the way the bed was designed, it is created. Well, first of all, I should say it's a beautifully designed bed, and that was purposeful. We talked with physical therapists, medical professionals, senior living executives. We took 40 beta beds into a community and had the residents try them out so that we could get their feedback. This We wanted this to be designed and created based on what the needs were. They wanted a beautiful bed. We, sometimes they need the features of a hospital bed, but they don't want the hospital bed in their home. Another benefit is the fabric around the base of the bed, that sort of tripping issue. You know, as we get older, our skin gets thinner, we bruise more easily or get skin tears and it's padded and fabric. So that helps just in case you do trip. It, it won't be quite as painful as a, a typical bed frame. That is true. Ours is just solid wood. So you definitely don't want to crash into that. No. Yeah. Um, so when you did the beta testing with the 40 residents, what kind can you, and not, you know, without giving away too much, you know, obviously we don't want personal information. Can you yeah. kind of indicate what you learned with the data tracking? Yeah. So the, the app was sort of, it was definitely in beta form. So what we were trying to figure out there was more, um, What's the accuracy of it, which what we found is, you know, there's really no um, reporting and data out there that's 100% accurate. And that's why we focus on trends. So a good accuracy score is between 72 and I believe 80%. So we were fitting within that, which is, which is great. And people, we didn't have it long enough with them to really get a a long-term goal, but we found out from them what they were interested in learning. And so what we found out that they wanted to know was how much sleep were they getting, sort of confirmation for them. Um, What type of sleep were they getting? Um, Were there any changes during that short period of time that that is something they might want to call out what we found from one of one of the residents is she she actually sent us a, an email probably six months after this whole um, research experiment and she said she was so excited she shared her report with her cardiologist she doesn't go into her cardiology appointment without taking that report with her it's just become part of her conversation So, but one of the things we learned most really about that whole experience was it's less about even how good a night's sleep they had. It's about what they want to be able to do the next day. And that's kind of where Dawn House came from. It's about the dawn of a new day. It's about not that setting sun, but the sunrise. And what are the things they want to feel good to be able to do the next day? They want to play with their grandchildren. They want to be able to go on outings or go on walks or do their exercise program. One woman who is a um, very competitive bridge player just wanted to know that she was going to be fresh and clear the next day so that she could play a good bridge game. It really was eye-opening. It's more about what's coming up and what's forward rather than, you know, looking at what happened last night or the night before. Obviously they all tie in together, but that's really the story that we came away with. That's actually nice, positive forward thinking. And my, my thought while you were talking is that, you know, when you go and you see your doctor, they have this tiny little snapshot of you 
and what's going on with you. Like a 15-minute snapshot out of the entire day, week, month, year is not very much data for them. And they have to rely on you telling them something. And some things are difficult to explain. You know, you just there. I had shingles in 2021, and the only clue that I knew something was up before the rash and the all the yucky parts started <laughs> was I just felt off. It's like, and we I went out with my cycling group, and it felt like I was having a hard time breathing, and my um, my watch was telling me that I was fine, but I just felt weird, and that's not very descriptive for a doctor. So, like, if I had had some sort of tracking with my Apple Watch other than, you know, like, my oxygen level was fine, my heart rate was a little higher than normal, but not dangerous. So, it's, you know, I gave them all that information. They still insisted I take a COVID test because, of course, this was 2021. (laughs) And, you know, but it's nice to have data. Like, a lot of people would be like, oh, you know, I don't really want all this information about me, especially our older population that didn't grow up with technology or weren't introduced to it as teenagers or young adults, you know, they might be like, I don't want all this information, but it's actually really beneficial. If you have changes in your heart rate, you know, you're going to tell your cardiologist or you're going to tell your general physician and they're going to send you to a cardiologist. And then, you know, if your sleep pattern changes, I guess they would do a sleep study with you. That'd be interesting. But I think the data is extremely important to know for yourself just on those days when you're like, like yesterday, I just felt like, by the end of the day, I was just like, Pfft. and if you like playing with the dog, she was mad at me. <laughs> you know you're in trouble when the golden retriever is mad at you. Right. <laughs> Even this morning, this, I was like right at lunchtime, she was still ignoring me. It was pretty funny. Oh, but I just didn't feel like, I didn't want to play with her, didn't want to take her to the dog park. <laughs> she's over, she's on the couch, so I'm trying to make sure I don't wild, wind her up. We'll probably go to the DP later. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we call it. So I'm assuming that you guys have done some, or you've learned a lot about sleep in creating this bed. You know, like, just a general question, like, why is sleep so important? Is that a, is that a question you feel qualified to answer? Now we're going to take a quick break for an ad. These ads help me continue to bring the show to you for free. When I learned that despite eating as healthy as possible, we can still have undernourished brains, I was frustrated. I also live in a farming community, so I'm aware that our food isn't grown as well as we need. Learning about NeuroReserves, Relevate, and how it's formulated to fix this problem convinced me to give them a try. Now I know many of you are skeptical, as was I. However, I know it's working because of one simple change. My sweet tooth is gone. I didn't expect that, and it's not something other users have commented on, but here's some truth. My brain always wanted something sweet. Now, fruit usually did the trick, but not always. One bad night's sleep would fire up my sugar cravings so much they were almost impossible to ignore. You ever have your brain screaming for a donut? Well, for me, those days are gone. It's been about six months since I started taking the supplement, and I have no regrets. I believe in my results so much that I'm passing on my 15% discount to you. Try it for two or three months and see if you have a miraculous sweet tooth cure or maybe just better focus and clarity. It's definitely worth a try. Now back to our conversation. Yeah, well, I'll first say I'm not a medical professional. Um, as I said, I, you know, I do have a background in um, working with and spending a lot of time doing research and marketing for seniors um, and now with Ergo Motion focused on sleep and sleep products. I also have had my own journey of, of sleep issues, which, you know, sort of incites you to go do your own research. But I mean, we what I've realized is everyone knows for overall health, you need to eat right and exercise. But sleep has sort of been that last area that I think more so now is a focus, but it really has not been. When you when you look out there for how to improve your health, there is less information about sleep than exercise and diet. But I think all three of those things are important because sleep has such an effect on your hormone levels, which has an effect on 
um, diseases like diabetes or cognitive issues, as, as we'll talk about. Um, it can affect your weight. It can affect your mood, your brain performance. There's just so many areas that it that it can affect and and they all tie in together if you don't sleep well you're more more likely to eat poorly the next day which then can affect your sleep the next day and it's just you know this vicious cycle that that happens um we do know that sleep and cognitive function are really tied in together um because when you're sleeping there are there's a whole lot going on in your brain that you may not even realize while you're sleeping a lot of it is like you mentioned just memory consolidation so you've taken in a lot of input during the day and at night while you're sleeping that is when your brain takes all that information and consolidates it so that you can reach back in there and get that information at another time and help you with your short-term storage and long-term storage and recall. Um, it also helps with problem solving. So it's, as you may find, if you have a very bad night's sleep the next day, you just really aren't quick. You just, it takes you longer to problem solve or figure things out or, or just even to get started. Um, Another area is the brain actually does take in harmful toxins during the day. And some of those are things like waste products like beta amyloid, which anyone that's, you know, focused on Alzheimer's and dementia knows beta amyloid. You need that time during that sleep and specific levels of, of sleep during while you're sleeping to clean that out. Um, you know, I, again, I, I can't speak too deeply in the scientific or medical area, but, you know, the beta amyloids, the plaques, and that seems to be, from what we know, um, have an effect on dementia. So all of that tied together, just generally supporting brain health and reducing the risk of dementia is a key to getting a good night's sleep. And I think it it, it takes effort. It's not just, you know, you put your pajamas on and you go to bed and you fall asleep and then you get up in the morning. I mean, it's a, a key part of sleep is setting a routine and preparing yourself for, for bed. Just like you have plans for the day during the day while you're working, you need to plan for that time in the evening just so you, your body and your mind can get into a routine which can help you fall asleep faster, help you stay asleep longer and have the right levels of sleep while you're sleeping. I occasionally, I probably should do it more often, is a 20-minute evening stretch. As most of my listeners know, I, I belong to the cult of Peloton. Oh. And <laughs> that's what I call it. I know Oops. you all. <laughs> I, I, I know members of the cult of Peloton. <laughs> yeah, there's a reason. It's like, it's, it's, it's a little addictive, but in a good way. But they have these... 20 minute evening stretches and you think oh my god this is stretching for 20 minutes i'd go die of boredom it does not feel like 20 minutes and i have learned because they are predominantly designed to stretch you know get the kinks and all that stuff out that we manage to tie our bodies into knots during the day before you go to bed and i have learned you're gonna do a 20 minute pre-bed stretch Turn down the bed, brush your teeth, wash your face, <laughs> make sure, you know, it's it's one that you could do. You don't you don't have to put on workout clothes or anything. You could do it in whatever you're hanging around in while you're watching TV or you know, you could probably do it in your jammies if you want. Because you finish the stretch, you get in bed, turn off the light, and you're asleep. And there's one of them where the instructor actually says, as you're doing a, some stretches laying flat on your back, and he says, if you, if you fall asleep on me, it's okay, I won't be mad. I'll be here when you get wake up. And I just love that because, you know, every time I do them, I think, I should do these every night. But, you know, at the end of the evening, you're like, oh, it's 20 minutes. <laughs> You know, and even if you just did half of that, but it's really more about the routine. You And you doing that, if you've done it enough, your body and your mind now know, oh, this is what we do before we go to sleep. And it just signals to you that it prepares you to get relaxed. Yeah, and it, it def definitely, they're really super passive stretches. So it's it's designed to, like I said, relax you, unknot your body, 
do things that are beneficial that you know to counteract all the things we do to it during the day right. like right. sitting too much or you know not whatever I, I always do 10 minute stretches after my workout so another 20 minutes seems like a lot but it's sleep routines and what do they call it sleep hygiene you know it's like they always say don't have your screen well i read my book on my phone so that's probably yeah, i'm not a big proponent of you know take that time you know you you know that you need seven to nine hours of sleep if you're of, of our age um so if you know when you need to get up in the morning you need to back into that but really the key is consistent schedule even on the weekends so if, if you need to get up at six in the morning, then you need to be asleep by 10 p.m., you know, just to make sure you're getting that minimum of sleep. And you need to do that even on the weekend because it just helps you consistently find that routine. Um, and, and it's hard to do that because life gets in the way of things. Yeah, I'm, I'm a solar charged person. So when the sun goes down, my solar battery starts to drain <laughs> and I really hate winter because when it's dark at 4.30, it's like, you know, by like 6.30, I'm like, yeah, I think I'm ready for bed. Oh, wait, it's dinner time. <laughs> well, that's the other problem is naps. So there's a lot of, you know, maybe controversy is a strong word, but about naps and whether you should take naps or not take naps. And the key from what I found is naps are great. I mean, your body's telling you something. You're not necessarily, if you lost a bunch of sleep the night before, you're not going to catch up necessarily. But a nap, 20 to 30 minute nap, as long as it's earlier in the day and it's not too close to bedtime. But if it's too long, then it's hard to get out of that once you once you wake up and it's going to be more difficult to fall asleep and stay asleep at night. I think people get overly exhausted because they don't sleep enough. Mm -hmm. And then they take a nap, probably too mm -hmm. late in the day and then they can't get to sleep when they need to get to sleep so yeah that's not cool but yeah I, i'm like a 10 o'clock bedtime seven o'clock get up and i would prefer to keep like that on the weekend but the hubby likes to sleep in and sometimes by 7 30 my stomach's like excuse us can we please be up and eating <laughs> it's yeah, like exactly. i'm like i'm like the doj 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 oh my god <laughs> now i can't even smell um you know like we we're about to have fallback mm -hmm. and it like she will look at you at a specific time like excuse you but you have neglected to feed me yes it is, like, it is my time yeah it takes a while for her to adjust when we do the spring forward it's oh like, yes ugh. you know so all these routines while they might seem limiting in what you can you know it's like i don't want to be that structured i just want to go with the flow and it's like well that's great until you are getting ready for bed and you're not tired or you've taken a nap or you fall asleep in front of the tv Ugh, that's that's the worst i hate it if i if i fall asleep in front of the tv i'm in trouble well with the time change uh, what i've found is if you prepare for it mm -hmm. and you sort of do a 15 minutes earlier or later depending on where we are in, in the the time change a few days to a week before by the time we do that time change it will be less disruptive to your regular sleep schedule which is important important in the spring when we do that when we lose that mm -hmm. whole hour right I keep thinking they're going to do away with this nonsense but that's what they say <laughs> <laughs> i believe it when they t when exactly. they tell us yeah the whole the whole spring forward thing is definitely important to you know ease into that because mm -hmm. you know just like what i was saying about the dog it just really messes with your schedule and i think one of the reasons they want to change it getting a little bit back onto the sleep topic mm -hmm. is because when we do the spring forward you know, people lose an hour of sleep there there's like, I believe like the day or the day after a few days after the spring forward, there's like more car accidents. There's mm -hmm. like more domestic violence. There's like more awful stuff. Yeah. They say it triggers people with anxiety or depression. It really triggers those. They can even trigger panic attacks. It's just, it's that, that can tell you how important sleep is right there. I didn't think I'd ever heard it triggering panic attacks. Oh, yikes. <laughs> if you, well, if you already have anxiety then and you're thrown off that way, it's it can trigger those, yeah. And those people probably really want daylight savings to be <laughs> abolished. <laughs> Permanent, yes. It's, uh, you know, well, and then we got people driving home in the dark. Yeah, I'm not, 
not really sure the benefits anymore. I always liked it, but the older I get, the less I approve of it. Was there any, um, did you guys do any studies about sleep with the bed? I couldn't remember if we asked that Yes, yeah, so we are working right now. We've been um, working with Duke University, so they have a sleep study center. And so we, it, it takes quite some time to put a program like that together. Um, that is really more around um, testing and confirming the sensors and the data reports. Um, we've been talking with Stanford as well. But yes, what we want to do is really get more information about how people sleeping in the Dawn House bed um, benefit so we can have, you know, data around the benefits of that. Um, so we're working towards that, definitely. There was one feature that you didn't mention earlier, and that's the zero gravity yeah, feature. Because so, so that sounded zero, cool to me. Yeah, so we call it zero G. So zero gravity is um, named after that position that astronauts are put in when they are um, taking off, um, being launched. It, it helps manage the, the pressure and zero Gs on their body. So where it is in the Dawn House bed is it raises your feet slightly higher, raises your head, but it's lower than your feet. So it really can help with ease back pain. It can help with circulation. Um, we actually have someone that is a side sleeper and wasn't sure zero G would work, but they actually tried doing that. And now they really can't fall asleep unless they're in zero G. It's how they fall asleep. And the way, what you can do is you can do presets on your Dawn house bed. So for time, certain times and routines, you can have your bed for a certain period of time in a certain way, and then change a couple other features we have are, uh, rise to wake and rest and unwind. So instead of using your alarm that can be really jarring in the morning, even if it's the radio, you can schedule it so that it slightly raises your head at the set time, which is a much nicer way to wake. It can also, for rest and unwind, it, if you're in an articulated position, you're watching TV or you're reading, you can have a set time and your bed will go to flat and that will just let you know. Now is the time that you have predetermined it is time to go to sleep. So some of those presets are really useful. Uh, another one is our auto anti-snore. So we know snoring is a big issue um, for couples. And, um, you know, instead of getting hit or kicked or nudged <laughs> in the middle of the night, the auto anti-snore, part of the microvibrations in the sensors can actually distinguish um, that snoring. Now, it can't be just a few snores. It has to be over a period of time, but you could set um, for a, a smaller period of time, a medium period of time, or a longer period of time. It will then slowly raise your head so it can open that airway. It can help sort of ease that snoring. will hold you up in that and it's so subtle that it shouldn't wake you. It'll just stop that snoring after you have been not, you know, you stop snoring for a period of time. It will slowly lower you back down to where you are. If you do it again later, it will do it again. So it's just another added bonus. I could just see the little AI robot like, oh, not again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Boy, this person is. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what did they drink before bed? But that's important, even if you are solo ager. Because really loud, deep snoring is sometimes a sign of sleep apnea. And even if it's not full-blown sleep apnea, you could be not getting enough oxygen to your brain. And so that's that's a really cool feature. I mean, yeah, because you'll be able to see in your reports. And if you didn't think you snored, <laughs> or maybe you didn't snore, and all of a sudden you are, again, you start going through that checklist, you know, have I gained weight? Have I changed my medication? Have I been eating? Did I drink alcohol too late? What have I done that's changed? If you can't figure out what that is and it's not something you can change, it might be a conversation you want to have with your physician. And like I was mentioning earlier, when you go to the doctor, unless you are meticulous about keeping notes about every little situation, you know, oh, well, I was snoring more than I I normally do, or 
I'm not getting as much restful sleep or whatever. It's like nobody takes that many notes. You know, caregivers do for their loved one because the loved one can't speak for themselves. But the more information we can provide a physician, the better the better they can help us. And Lord knows that's that's that would be important just by itself. Well, and I know when I go, I usually have a few things, but I always walk out of there and realize I forgot <laughs> to cover something. So if you have this report and you've emailed it to them ahead of time, then that will initiate that conversation. Which those are important. So is there any last bit of information on sleep that you want to leave us with so that people are thinking about, oh, that's really important. I should look into getting a Dawn house bed. Yeah, I just think it's it's really key. Um, like we talked about earlier, so many people just plan to age in place, but don't have a plan to age in place. And as we get older, I know there are those conversations you have with your adult children, and there may be disagreements about what the plans should be for the future. And the Dawn House Bed is just one of those tools, and products that you can use in your home to help you prepare your home or age in place so you can stay there longer, be more safe, um, have the security, offer your family the peace of mind that they have sort of a, an idea. It's not a nanny cam. <laughs> we know those things have, have been used, but it's just, it's a conversation. It's, it's opening up. It's giving you peace of mind. It's giving your family peace of mind and it's protecting you and it's comfortable and it's beautiful. And it's just a lovely piece of furniture to have in your home in the end that just has so many added benefits for you. Well, I know as we age, most people don't replace furniture. So you can't, I would, I would guess the majority of people listening, like my bed frame is 20 years old. The mattress is not, the bed frame is. So when the mattress needs replacing would be a perfect time to say, my, maybe it's time to change the furniture in the bedroom so that we can have something that would allow us to stay here longer. Although I did convince the hubby that, you know, by the time you're 85, taking care of a house is a lot of work. And assisted living is not a horrible place to go. Well, it's no, just unfortunately, if you have customers, their their family, as they're moving into assisted living, they purchase the Don House bed for them. So when they move into their new apartment, the bed is delivered, it's set up, and then it still offers the same safety and security. You do have care staff there, um, and they're going to communicate to the family member, but all of those same features and benefits are beneficial, whether you're in your home, long time home, or whether you're in your assisted living apartment. Well, it would be better if we had more options for, you know, late life living options, I guess is a nice way of putting it. But until then, products like yours are, they're, I just see more and more of them happening. You know, when I started this show, nobody was talking about this kind of technology and it just seems to be changing rapidly, which it's going to be interesting to see what happens in another five years. See, I'm almost 57, so five years, I'll be 62, so... 10 years before I can get social security. I bet you there's going to be a huge amount of changes in those 10 years. I I guarantee it. It's amazing. We uh, participate in the consumer electronics show in Las Vegas in January, every January. And we are situated in the digital health area and we are surrounded by tools for sleep. It, it, It is just amazing. I mean, there's, there's been digital health there for a long time, but the focus on the, sleep aspect of digital health health it, it's it's just every year it changes and it gets oh. more amazing <laughs> <laughs> i know i would like to go to that that uh, convention but i don't know if it's on the budget so <laughs> yeah <laughs> it'd well, be dangerous anybody, to go if anybody is going to be there please uh, visit us and we'd love to show them the bed it's not that far a drive and I do have a hybrid, but going there is dangerous because then you're like, oh, we need to buy all these things. Yeah. <laughs> well, this has been fantastic. I appreciate it. For the people that get to the end, this is the second time we quote unquote recorded this conversation because <laughs> the first time I had technical issues and forgot to hit record. So that's your little behind the scenes podcast info. And as always, I really appreciate you joining me again. <laughs> And I look forward to uh, learning more and 
Like I said, the mattress we have is five years old, so it's probably, you know, probably got, what, three to five years left, and then we'll have to mm -hmm. change all the bedroom furniture. <laughs> well, I do want to offer a, a promotional discount to your listeners. So um, we would like to offer 20% off the Dawn House bed. They can um, shop on our website, dawnhouseliving.com, and use the promo code MEMORIES20, and that'll be good until March 10th. So we'd love to have you visit the site, learn more about the bed, learn more about the features. That would be awesome. I really appreciate it. And see, when you guys listen all the way to the end, you get just a little extra bonus. So thank you so much for Jen. For, oh, I almost tried to bungle. <laughs> thank you so much, Jennifer, for joining me. And who knows, maybe we'll end up in Las Vegas in January together. There you go. That would be great. It would be wonderful to see you there. Baby Memories is also available wherever you get your podcasts.